Horrid Henry wakes the dead. and get in the coffin. No, 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 shouted Miss Battle Axe. Spitting is not a talent, Grim. Violet, you can't do the can-can as your talent. Ralph, burping to the beat is not a talent. She turned to Bert. What's your talent? I don't know, said Beefy Bert. And what about you, Stephen? said Miss Battleaxe grimly. Caveman! grunted Stone Age Stephen. Ugh! <laughs> Horrid Henry had had enough. Me next! shrieked Horrid Henry. I've got a great talent! Me next! Me! shrieked Moody Margaret. Me! shrieked Rude Ralph. No one who shouts out will be performing anything, said Miss Battleaxe. Next week was Horrid Henry's school talent show. But this wasn't an ordinary school talent show. Oh no, this year was different. This year, the famous TV presenter Sneering Simone was choosing the winner. But best and most fantastic of all, the prize was a chance to appear on Simone's TV programme, Talent Tigers. And from there, well, there was no end to the fame and fortune which awaited the winner. Horrid Henry had to win. He just had to. A chance to be on TV. A chance for his genius to be recognised at last. <laughs> the only problem was he had so many talents it was impossible to pick just one. He could eat crisps faster than Greedy Graham. He could burp to the theme tune of Marvin the Maniac. He could stick out his tongue almost as far as Moody Margaret. But brilliant as these talents were, perhaps they weren't quite special enough to win. Hmm. Wait, he had it. He could perform his new rap. I have an ugly brother. Ick, ick, ick. A smelly toad, brother, who makes me sick. That would be sure to get him on talent tigers. <laughs> Margaret? barked Miss Battle Axe. What's your talent? Susan and I are doing a rap, said Moody Margaret. What? I'm doing a rap, howled Henry. How dare Margaret steal his idea? Only one person can do a rap said Miss Battleaxe firmly. Unfair! shrieked Horrid Henry. Be quiet, Henry, said Miss Battleaxe. Moody Margaret stuck out her tongue at Horrid Henry. <laughs> na, 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 na. Horrid Henry stuck out his tongue at Moody Margaret. <laughs> oh, it was so unfair. I'm doing a hundred push-ups, said Aerobic Owl. I'm playing the drums, said Jazzy Jim. I want to do a rap! howled Horrid Henry. Mine's much better than hers. You have to do something else or not take part, said Miss Battleaxe, consulting her list. <laughs> not take part? Was Miss Battleaxe out of her mind? Had all those years working on a chain gang done her in? Miss Battleaxe stood in front of Henry, baring her fangs. Her pen tapped impatiently on her notebook. Last chance, Henry. List closes in ten seconds. What to do? What to do? I'll do magic, said Horrid Henry. How hard could it be to do some magic? He wasn't a master of disguise and the fearless leader of the Purple Hand Gang for nothing. In fact, not only would he do magic, he would do the greatest magic trick the world had ever seen. No rabbits out of a hat, no flowers out of a cane, no sawing a girl in half. Though if Margaret volunteered, Henry would be very happy to oblige. No, he 
Henry is stupendioso, the greatest magician ever would, would, he would break the dead. Wow, that was much cooler than a rap. He could see it now. He would chant his magic spells and wave his magic wand until slowly, 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 out of the coffin, the bony body would rise, sending the audience screaming out of the hall. Yes, thought Horrid Henry. Talent tigers, here I come. All he needed was an assistant. Unfortunately, no one in his class wanted to assist him. Are you crazy? said gorgeous Gorinda. I've got a much better talent than that. No way, said Clever Claire. Wake the dead, gasped Weepy William. No! Rats, thought Horrid Henry. For his spectacular trick to work, an assistant was essential. Henry hated working with other children, but sometimes it couldn't be helped. Was there anyone he knew who would do exactly as they were told? Someone who would obey his every order? Hmm, perhaps there was a certain someone who would even pay for the privilege of being in his show. Perfect Peter was busy emptying the dishwasher without being asked. Peter, said Henry sweetly. How much would you pay me if I let you be in my magic show? Perfect Peter couldn't believe his ears. Henry was asking him to be in his show. Peter had always wanted to be in a show, and now Henry was actually asking him after he'd said no a million times. It was a dream come true. He'd pay anything. I've got six pounds twenty-seven in my piggy bank, said Peter eagerly. Horrid Henry pretended to think. Done, said Horrid Henry. You could start by painting the coffin black. Thank you, Henry, said Peter humbly, handing over the money. Tee, thought Horrid Henry, pocketing the loot. Henry told Peter what he had to do. Peter's jaw dropped. And will my name be on the billboard so everyone will know I'm your assistant? Asked Peter. Of course, said Horrid Henry. <laughs> the great day arrived at last. Henry had practised and practised and practised. His magic robes were ready. His magic spells were ready. His coffin was ready. His props were ready. Even his dead body was as ready as it would ever be. Victory was his. Henry and Peter stood backstage and peeked through the curtain as the audience charged into the hall. The school was buzzing. Parents pushed and shoved to get the best seats. There was a stir as sneering Simone swept in, taking her seat in the front row. Would you please move? demanded Margaret's mother, waving her camcorder. I can't see my little Maggie Muffin. And I can't see Al with your big head in the way, snapped aerobic Al's dad, shoving his camera in front of Moody Margaret's mum. Parents behave, shouted Mrs. Oddbod. What an exciting program we have for you today. You will be amazed at all the talents in this school. First, Claire will recite pi, which, as you all know, is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter to 31 significant figures. 3.14159265358979323846264338329, said Clever Claire. Bravo. Sneering Simone made a few notes. Boring! shouted Horrid Henry. Boring! Shh! hissed Miss Battleaxe. Now, Gorinda, Linda, Fiona, and Zoe proudly present 
the cushion dance. Gorgeous Dorinda, Lazy Linda, Fiery Fiona and Zippy Zoe ran on stage and placed a cushion in each corner. Then they skipped to each pillow, pretended to sew it, then hopped around with a pillow each, singing, We're the Stitching Queens, dressed in satin with full of beans. See us preen as we steal the scene. Bravo! Sneering Simone looked surprised. Tea, thought horrid Henry gleefully. If everyone's talents were as awful as that, he was a shoo-in for talent tigers. Lovely, said Mrs. Oddbod. Just lovely. And now we have William, who will play the flute. Weepy William put his mouth to the flute and blew. There was no sound. <laughs> William stopped and stared at his flute. The mouth hole appeared to have vanished. Everyone was looking at him. What could he do? Toot, 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 drilled William, pretending to blow. Toot, toot, toot. wailed William, bursting into tears and running off stage. Bravo! Never mind, said Mrs. Oddbod. Anyone could put the mouthpiece on upside down. And now we have, Mrs. Oddbod glanced at her paper, a caveman ugga ugg dance. Stone Age Stephen and Beefy Bert stomped on stage, wearing leopard skin costumes and carrying clubs. Ugh! grunted Stone Age Stephen. Ugh! 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 Me, caveman! Stomp, clumper, clump! Stomp, clumper, clump! Stomp, Stone Age Stephen. Stomp, clumper, clump! Stomp, clumper, clump! Stomped Beefy Bert. Ugh, a bug! Ugh, a bug! Ugh, ugh, ugh! bellowed Stephen, whacking the floor with his club. Bert, hissed Miss Battleaxe. This isn't your talent. What are you doing on stage? I don't know, said Beefy Bert. Boo! Boo! jeered horrid Henry from backstage as the caveman thudded off. Bravo! Then Moody Margaret and Sour Susan performed their rap. Margaret! Margaret, it's all true. Margaret, best of the best. Pick Margaret and dump the rest. Bravo. Rats, thought horrid Henry, glaring. My rat was so much better. What a waste. And why was the audience applauding? Boo! yelled horrid Henry. Another sound out of you and you will not be performing, snapped Miss Battleaxe. And now Soraya will be singing You Broke My Heart in 39 Pieces, accompanied by her mother on the piano, said Mrs. Oddbod hastily. You broke my heart in 39 pieces and stunned in every kissed her mother, pounding the piano and singing along. I'm singing as loud as I can, yelled Soraya. Bang, 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 went the piano. Then Jolly Josh began to saw Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star on his double bass. Sneering Simone held her ears. next, said Horrid Henry, grabbing hold of his billboard and whipping off the cloth. Perfect Peter stared at the billboard. It read, Il Stupendioso, world's greatest magician, played by Henry. Magic by Henry. 
Costumes by Henry. Props by Henry. Sound by Henry. Written by Henry. Directed by Henry. But Henry, said Peter, where's my name? Right here, said Horrid Henry, pointing. On the back, in tiny letters, was written, Assistant Peter. But no one will see that, said Peter. Henry snorted. If I put your name on the front of the billboard, everyone would guess the trick, said Henry. No, they wouldn't, said Peter. Honestly, thought Horrid Henry, did any magician ever have such a dreadful helper? I'm the star, said Henry. You're lucky you're even in my show. Now shut up and get in the coffin. Perfect Peter was furious. That was just like Henry to be so mean. Get in, ordered Henry. Peter put on his skeleton mask and climbed into the coffin. He was fuming. Henry had said he'd put his name on the billboard and then he'd written it on the back. No one would know he was the assistant. No one. The lights dimmed. Spooky music began to play. Moaned the ghostly sounds as horrid Henry, wearing his special long black robes studded with stars and a special magician's hat, dragged his coffin through the curtains onto the stage. I am your stupendioso, the great and powerful magician, intoned Henry. Now, Il Stupendioso will perform the greatest trick ever seen. Be prepared to marvel. Be prepared to be amazed. Be prepared not to believe your eyes. I, Il Stupendioso, will wake the dead. Horrid Henry swept back and forth across the stage, waving his wand and mumbling. First, I will say the secret words of magic. Beware, beware. Do not try this at home. Do not try this in a graveyard. Do not, Henry's voice sank to a whisper. Do not try this. Unless you're prepared for the dead to walk. Horrid Henry ended his sentence with a blood curdling scream. <coughs> the audience gasped. Horrid Henry stood above the coffin and chanted Abracadabra, flummery flap. Voodoo, hoodoo, mumbo quacks. Rise and shine, corpse of mine. Then Horrid Henry whacked the coffin once with his wand. Slowly, perfect Peter poked a skeleton hand out of the coffin, then withdrew it. Oh, went the audience. Toddler Tom began to wail. Horrid Henry repeated the spell. Abracadabra, flummery flax, voodoo, hoodoo, mumbo, quacks. Rise and shine, bony swine. Then Horrid Henry whacked the coffin twice with his wand. This time, Perfect Peter slowly raised the plastic skull with a few tufts of blonde hair glued to it. Then lowered it back down. Toddler Tom began to howl. And now, for the third and final time, I will say the magic spell, and before your eyes, the body will rise. Stand back! Abracadabra, flummery flax, 
Voodoo Hoodoo Mumbo Cracks Rise and Shine Here is the sign And Horrid Henry whacked the coffin three times with his wand The audience held its breath And held it And held it And held it He's been dead a long time. Maybe his hearing isn't so good, said Horrid Henry. Rise and shine! Here is the sign! shouted Henry, whacking the coffin furiously. Again, nothing happened. Rise and shine, brother of mine, hissed Henry. Kicking the coffin, or you'll be sorry you were born. I'm on strike, thought Perfect Peter. How dare Henry stick his name on the back of the billboard? And after all Peter's hard work. Hurried Henry looked at the audience. The audience looked expectantly at Hurried Henry. What could he do? Open the coffin and yak the body out? Yell, ta -da! and run off stage? Do his famous elephant dance? Horrid Henry took a deep breath. Now that's what I call dead, said Horrid Henry. This was a difficult decision, said Sneering Simone. Henry held his breath. He'd kill Peter later. Peter had finally risen from the coffin after Henry left the stage. Then instead of slinking off, he'd actually said, Hello, everyone. I'm alive. And waved. Grrr. Well, Peter wouldn't have to pretend to be a corpse once Henry had finished with him. A very difficult decision, but I've decided that the winner is... Please not Margaret, please not Margaret, prayed Henry. Sneering Simone consulted her notes. The winner is the ill stupendioso. Yes! screamed horrid Henry, leaping to his feet. He'd done it! Fame at last! Henry, superstar was born. Yes! Nearing Simone glared. As I was saying, the ill stupendioso corpse. <laughs> Great comic timing. Can someone tell me his name? Hurried Henry stopped dancing. Huh? What? The corpse? Is that me? said Peter. I won. No! Shrieked, horrid Henry.